Okay, welcome, second action. Uh, <laughs> we're outside the uh, uh, yeah, BP, British Petroleum. We've got a few of the Met Police here. And uh, it's a dying. If you could uh, send it to uh, BP or not BP, that'd be great to reclaim the bard. These are the same. Uh, P sponsored by P P T T I P sponsored by P P T sponsored by P P yeah, if you could uh, tweet it out, that'd be great. That's actually uh, TTIP equals climate change. BP or not BP. It's actually uh, BP or one of the people, uh, one of the comp corporations, but not paying out their taxes and Everybody buying up the, uh, buying up the, um, well, the arts in the country. Yes. While I was going on, yep. Yep. Sorry. Yes. TTIP equals climate change. Have you thought about this? Uh, right, so why are we in BP? BP! BP! Graveyard of Democracy! T! T! BP! Graveyard of Democracy! BP! 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 So as part of the Transatlantic Trade and Investment Partnership, the EU want us to import more tar sand oil and shale gas from the US. What do we think about that? No! no. Yes. And what yes. do we say to BP? No. IP sponsored by BP! BT IP sponsored by BP! Alright, thanks everyone for coming. Right now, we are having a die-in outside of the BP station to show that the fossil fuel industry is killing our future. What do we think about that? TTIP means more fossil fuel exports from the US, from the US more fracking, more CO2 emissions. The fossil fuel industry is poisoning our planet and killing our future, and we have to act now. London, which is a hub for divestment campaigns, which works to stigmatize the fossil fuel industry. It's the fastest growing divestment movement of all time, fighting the largest, most powerful industry the world has ever seen. We have to stop these companies from killing our future. Woo! Absolutely. So we can stop this. We only have one planet. And right now, we are showing what these companies are doing to us. So everyone, let's give a round of applause for everyone here who has died right now outside of BP. Friends, my name's Asad Raymond from Friends here. Right. And we're here, we're doing this dying on this street in Shepherd Bush. But yet, two days ago, bodies of young women, men, and children were being fished out of the Mediterranean. 500 people who lost their lives. Names we'll never know, histories we'll never hear about, stories we'll never hear about their dreams and aspirations. And last year, three and a half thousand people drowned in the Mediterranean. 
And you might wonder why I'm talking about that and not climate change. Because friends, those people on those boats were fleeing famine, were fleeing starvation, were fleeing conflict. And the response of our government, of our government here, was to say we have to cut the funding for those rescue boats because it encourages people to migrate. Friends, what encourages people to migrate are our, our economic policies. It's the actions of our dirty energy corporations. Some of you might see the vile, basic outpouring from Katie Hopkins this morning. This morning. He talked about those migrants as cockroaches and said we had to send gunboats to drive them back into the sea. And friends, that sums up what we're facing. Governments who don't want to act, supported by people and companies who put profit before humanity. Friends, the reason people are migrating the reason we're seeing this is because of climate change. Yes. The UN now says more people are on the moving because of climate change than, in, than because of conflict. Just two years ago, we saw 10,000 people die in Typhoon Haiyan in the Philippines. We saw 30 million people have to leave their homes during, because of floods in Pakistan. And just this December, in Peru, we saw human rights defenders, indigenous leaders, murdered because they stood up to the extractive industry and their, and their land and their attempt to drill in the Amazon. Friends, BP this week decided to go beyond even the pretense of going beyond petroleum and refocus its energy on dirty energy. And the reason they're doing that is because they think that they have got our governments in their pockets. That they think that people around the world aren't strong enough to be able to stop them. That's why BP continues to pour billions into the fossil fuel extractions, into tar sand extractions, which everybody knows that if they get it out, it will, it will burn the planet. Friends, we're heading for a warming of the planet of four to five degrees. And the companies that are responsible are the companies like BP here. But there is resistance. There is massive resistance going on. In Canada, the First Nations people are resisting tar sands. And in this country, we're resisting dirty energy. Communities up and down this country are saying no to fracking. There are communities and campaigns saying no to oil, no to gas. Friends, we don't want BP to go beyond petroleum. We want a world where we go beyond BP. So say no to TTIP, no to Dirty Energy Corporations. Thank you. We gotta keep that oil in the soil, keep that coal in the hole, keep that oil in the soil, keep that coal in the hole. Keep that oil in the soil. Keep that coal in the hole. Keep that oil. <laughs> Keep the gas in the ground. Keep the gas on the gas in the ground. More gas, I'll pass. I just want to add something here. I think people have been brainwashed into thinking fossil fuels are cheap. You know, say so yes, we probably need renewables, 80% of people want them, 
but people buy into that basic idea. Think about the cost of the invasion of Iraq. Think about the money spent destroying Libya. Think about all the, the military adventures that don't show up on the balance sheet of what we pay to, to use this kind of insane, insane energy. And it is insane. Literally, the, one of the most reputed climate scientists in the world called Sheldon Huber, he led the World Bank study on, on climate change and its likely impact this century last year. Somebody said to him, because everyone's heard about this two degree figure, which itself is, is a travesty in terms of Africa, but somebody said to him, what's the difference between a two degree rise and a four degree rise in temperature? And his short answer was human civilization. As Assad said, we have 22 million people on the move because of climate change already. Um, there have been two books that have come out in the last five years with the term climate wars in the title. We're already seeing, seeing numerous conflicts leading to death and destruction over this stuff. It's kind of obvious when you think about it, but it's easy to forget that when food runs out, when the lake runs dry, that, that different communities on both sides are depending on for their lives, things get really, really nasty. And we have known this with greater and greater certainty for the last few decades. We've had every government under the sun claim that the environment's the future of our children, that they're going to do the right thing, yet they are in the pockets of companies like these ones. And as long as that is the case, there is no chance of a decent future for our kids. And one of the other things that we've heard is that, well, renewable energy would be nice, but it just can't do the job of fossil fuels. Brother, Stanford yeah. University, Brother. one of the most you know, prestigious universities on the planet, did a major study into the viability of renewable energy at a global scale. And the conclusion of that study was by 2030, we could produce 100% of the world's energy renewably. And like so many problems, like so many problems, the more systematic the solutions, the less problems you have. So people talk about the problems with storing renewable energy. The more you link up vast sources of renewable energy in different places, the more when the sun is shining in one place, you can get the energy over to the world where the wind isn't blowing, and vice versa. Um, the more we electrify our transport fleet, the more you have batteries plugged in a lot of the time that can reverse their charge when the proverbial spike in the in the, the um, kettles going on in the half time of the football, the more you can deal with those kind of things easily. We can produce all our energy and not destroy life as we know it um, for all future generations. Um, I'm, I'm just going to link to, again, a positive note that some people have might, me, might have heard me say before on the green. Why do they need these trade deals? The main answer is because the tide is turning against them and they know it. Yay! That is why... That is why they're trying to lock this stuff in beyond the, the reach of national governments because they know that people are going against it. Um, we have very, very few years to turn this around, but there is an absolutely lose-lose trajectory that we're on at the moment. The only solution to that, as Naomi Klein and Ms. James and Ebony makes very clear, is a win-win scenario which saves the world and creates a much better, happier future for us all. Okay, yeah, definitely a busy day. Okay, it's a very busy day. I think we're moving again to the other side of the street. <laughs> okay, guys, I shall be back uh, shortly. Uh, okay, so, yeah, just send this off to, uh, to everybody, okay? Thanks, guys. Peace out. Yep, we're just at the, the BP, uh, BP station by, just by Shepherd's uh, Bush. Come on, so please, any more if you want to, uh, yeah, uh, just uh, follow us at uh, Twitter, OccupyNN, then uh, for more developments. And of course, subscribe, Occupy the Central. This is OB. Thanks.